Good evening ladies and welcome back to our Walk for Life. This is our second night, our second Wednesday night. Thank you for joining us um, on this our walk. So get either the walking shoes on or get the knitting out and join us um, tonight. Uh, we're going over to Colrats tonight for our first part of our Walk for Life and we're meeting with Julie Brown. So Julie, over to you. Hi, yeah, it's really great to be with you this Wednesday evening for a walk for life. Um, I got a phone call the other day from Agnes and she said, can you do me a favour? Now, I'm not sure if you know or not, but if Agnes Jones rings looking for a favour, you don't say no. Um, so I am going to attempt to share with you um, something that God has been teaching me over these past few weeks. And indeed, possibly years, um, I mustn't be very... Uh, quick on the old uptake um, but it's been the same message that God has really laid upon my heart for years um, and I hope that message never leaves me because it's this that all things work together for good for them that love the Lord and those who are called according to his purpose and um, all things um, so you probably have have seen me before um, my name's Julie and I have sang a few times um, out in Dinseverick with you all. Um, but to share a little bit about me, um, I have two kids, Sadie is four, Charlie's two. I have a husband, um, Nick, and we are all at home in Clarats, um shielding. Um, and we're shielding because I've got MS. Now, <laughs> I was diagnosed 11 years ago and my MS turned acute very, very quickly and um, I really, it was a long time before I kind of came out of many, many relapses and it, it was a long time um, but God was good and gracious and he allowed me to be put back to a level of health where I was able to, to work for a few years and, and whatever. Um, now, being a mum with two effectively babies, because they are, I mean, series four, but she can barely put her own t-shirt on later. Um, but being a mummy with MS, I'm not going to lie, it's not easy. Um, but we all have our trouble, trouble, troubles, and we all have our struggles. And it's all things work for good. Now, I struggled for a long time with thought, why did God give me two babies when I'm not fit to look after them myself? Why did God give me two babies when I'm not fit to look after them? And I struggled with that. But God brought not just all things to mind he brought another verse and it's colossians um chapter 1 verse 16 and i think actually i'll read it and um, just so i get just so i get it right for in him all things were created in heaven and on earth visible and invisible whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities all things were created through him and for him so in him through him, all uh, for him, all things. All things were created in him, through him and for him. And suddenly, the question of why becomes why not? Because I was bought with a price. I'm not my own. And I just think, that that is amazing. That all things were created for him. I wasn't created for me. I was created for him. And all things work together for good that them that love the Lord and for those that are called according to his purpose. Nowhere in that verse does it say all things were created for Julie's good. Now all things work out for his good. So suddenly, trailing my body out of bed because Sadie wants mummy and not daddy doesn't 
really seem to matter that much anymore. Doesn't seem to really have the same weight. No. Is it still hard? Yes. I am not long out of hospital. I um, was in the Royal for five weeks. Um, I had no feeling of power down my left side. But God has been good and I've been healed out of that relapse and I am really um, getting back to my normal baseline. And God's been good and gracious in that. But if I can leave anything with you, I want you to remember this, that you were created in him, through him, for him, and that all things, even this coronavirus, all things work together for good for those that love the Lord and those who are called according to his purpose. I just want to pray with you guys um, before before I leave and before we go on to, to enjoy the rest of the evening. Heavenly Father, I just thank you um, for this uh, medium of internet that we are connecting through. And I want to thank you that we have people like Agnes who are willing to rally the troops and get them together um, just so that we can uh, have some fellowship in the absence of going to church. Father, I pray that you will keep this message at the forefront of our minds, that we were created in you and through you, but most of all for you. And that all things, no matter what our circumstances are, that all things were created for good. For those that love you and are called according to your purpose. Heavenly Father, I just pray that um, you will keep us safe in these really uncertain times of you're scared to put your head out the door. But Father, that we will understand that you have this under control. And that this is something that is not hard for you to deal with. Father, I just hand every single one of us that is watching this video tonight into your hand. In your son's most holy and precious name. Amen. Amen. I, it's really great to be able to share with you in song this evening. Um, I would normally have a girl accompany me, but this is lockdown and she's in Kells. So um, I got the trusty guitar right and we're going to give it a go. Not a guitar player, but we'll see what happens. This is I Am Still Willing. I hear you fumble for words But I know what you're trying to say You think you've gone too far For me to take them all away But I want you to know That no matter where you've been That I am still willing To come make you clean See the brokenness within I know the things you're trying to hide How can you pass this gift And still stay hungry deep inside For I want you to know That no matter where you've been That I am still willing To come make you clean I took all your chains on me long ago Cause I knew you could not break them On your own I made you to be free So I'm waiting for you I'm waiting for you Don't think it's been too long Or that the promise has worn out Only I can give The grace you cannot do without But I want you to know That no matter where 
you've been I am still willing to come make you clean I am still willing to come and make you clean I took off your chains on me long ago Cause I knew you, you could not break them on your own I've made you to be free So I'm waiting for you I'm waiting for you So don't think it's been too long Or that the promise has worn out Only I can give The grace you cannot do without For I want you to know That no matter where you've been That I am still willing to come make you clean I am still willing to come and make you clean Thank you very much Julie for sharing with us and we know that it's not easy being a mum in this time of lockdown and being uh, quite isolated and being on your own we are going to have now um, a talk from Dickie Barr. He spoke to us last week, but tonight he's going to share with us how to cope with anxiety during a time of lockdown. Dickie is a GP in the Wernstown, Dollingstown area. And thank you, D Dickie, for joining us again from your home tonight. Thank you. And now we have two of our daughters with us, Rebecca, uh, who is a midwife, and Serena, one of our twins, she's the baby in the family, who um, is a dietitian. And, and certainly they and I work <laughs> in the health service and uh, we all appreciate this, the amazing support from the public for the health service. I work as a GP and uh, Serena is actually working in one of the COVID centres and Rebecca's in labour ward. And uh, I, I'm going to ask them just a few questions because obviously we're all facing lockdown. It's been, it's been a difficult <coughs> time for everybody. Uh, but as a family, how, how we have faced lockdown is, is, is obviously something that's been uh, an experience. So, Rebecca, uh, what, what, what have you found helpful to you during this period of time? Um, so for me, it's um, obviously with all the stuff that's going on around the world and the, the hardships that a lot of people have faced, um, it has helped me to kind of refocus on what's important. Um, it's reminded me that relationships are what's important that um, time spent with Jesus is important um, because so often our lives are so busy that we don't actually take um, the essential time that we need to to invest in a relationship with Jesus and also with those closest to us as well. And obviously because of restrictions, um, it has meant that there's lots of people um, in our close circle that we haven't been able to be in contact with. Um, but it's also been, it's meant to be in a wee bit uh, innovative to involve in Zoom or involve in phone calls or just the importance of keeping in touch and the importance for your mental health as well in um, keeping keeping in contact with people you care about and love but also on the bigger basis of, of really spending time with Jesus and also just being reminded to pray for the world outside your own world because so many other people are really struggling at this time right across the world and to be able to just sit at Jesus' feet invest in his word and really just get to know him better and also to pray for those around the world has been really useful. I think as a family we have tried where possible, it hasn't happened every night, to do something devotionally mm -hmm. and we've looked at uh, some of the Psalms, we've looked at Jonah and you know we're looking at Revelations now which is a bit of a challenge and, and, and we've taken a particular prayer focus of North Korea looking at what people face there um, and the persecution and it's been a learning together as a family and, and I think that has helped the relationship. Uh, Serena now obviously you're very much into the exercise and you're a dietitian very much into healthy diet and everything but, but I have to say you also enjoy your bacon and, and I'm thinking the other thing that I feel has helped us as we've tried to help others through, through uh, COVID do you want to talk a little bit about maybe sort of the, the foods that have been made and maybe some of the, the foods that have been delivered? 
Yes, um, so me and my sisters, all of us really enjoy baking and cooking and I think, you know, through this time there's a lot of um, people in our own communities who are lonely, who maybe don't have the same community that we have in our household and we've really um, found that we enjoy being able to bring those baked goods to other people in the community because um, I know myself there's days where I get up I'm very a task oriented person and because we are in lockdown and you know it's a very much a slower pace of life and um, I find at the start finding myself feeling a bit down at times because I wasn't completing the same amount of tasks in a day as I was used to but what I found really helpful was setting myself every day okay what task am I going to do for someone else today and um, because I often find you know you, you get so much more satisfaction in doing things for other people and um, so whether that's you know in the household saying okay what am I going to do for my sister what am I going to do for my mum or whether that's someone outside of our household saying okay what can I do for my elderly neighbour next door can I bake them something or cook them something and that's kind of what we find helpful mm -hmm. um, as a household doing together and it's enjoyable doing that for other people. I think too the other thing now um, Janice and I are a little bit older and our joints are catching us a wee bit, but there, there is an element that everybody has had more opportunity to exercise. I know probably previously I wouldn't have done enough exercise, but I've enjoyed the walking and uh, there's no doubt about it, everybody's experience of COVID, we're all in it together, but everybody's experience is different and for some there is an awful lot of isolation and an awful lot of loneliness and I know as a GP I would certainly be, be saying to folk, very much to focus on, you know, fresh air, uh, communication where they can, you know, certainly telephone and, and, and I think there's a responsibility for those of us who are maybe with others to remember people who are isolated and alone but I think certainly if people have concerns about their health and I think it's been stressed by the government, don't ignore physical ailments just because you, you, you feel doctors or casualties are overloaded because if, if you have concerns, contact your practice. I know we would work very much on, on, on telephone and video contact where possible, but we still can see people where necessary. So don't ignore your physical health if you have problems during this particular period of time. And certainly your mental health is very important. And I think focusing on the spiritual side, because I, I think we all have opportunity, maybe in a sense a window that might never happen again when there is more time that we can spend, uh, you know, talking about the things of God, reading our Bibles, praying. Uh, I'm not the best of readers, but Christian books too. There's a lot of opportunity. I, I suppose exercise is one we did touch on, and I know um, Janice and I, we walk a little bit slower. We're out today for a walk, and, and the girls got well ahead of us, but something else came to the fore through that, Janice, as we've talked about exercise and talked about needs in the world. And Do you want to maybe mention a little bit about that? Yeah, well, I suppose um, through the work of Charlene's project, we're involved in, in different communities. And we had two wee vill uh, villages in Guatemala uh, that we have um, built a school in and been involved in and supporting them. And they're small villages high up in the mountains. But we heard just the other uh, day about the fact that the people in these villages are obviously locked up because of COVID. Uh, they can't go out. Uh, they're not allowed out at all. They cannot work. And they have started having to put out a white flag at the front of their wee huts to let others know that they no longer have any food and that they are starting to starve in, in their wee um, homes. And uh, we heard about this. And you know, it had just come after we had had a day of great celebration for VA Day. We'd had our wee banners up in the back garden. We'd had our flags. We'd had lots of food that these girls had made. I mean, I have literally got uh, fatter by the minute uh, through lockdown. And we knew, I, I thought of those flags. And then that night I heard of these white flags that our friends in Guatemala were putting out at home uh, to signify they had no food. And we thought, what can we do? And I know prayer is so important, but sometimes you feel, Lord, as well as praying, what can we do? We've got to pray and we've always got to pray for others in need, but sometimes we need to do something as well. And, and we decided then, just literally over the breakfast table as a family, that we would try and raise some money. We had been in touch with Guatemala. We found out that we would need, for the next three months, to give every household in the two villages enough food 
uh, basic staple food of just rice, beans, uh, that it would cost us £12,000. And we there and then said, we've got to get this money out, we'll send it out and we'll try and raise funds if we can. But if the money doesn't come in, so be it. And uh, we ha pledged the £12,000 to feed those families. And we decided to do it uh, to have a fundraiser and we decided we would try and do a half marathon as a family. Now the first thing I said was I can only walk it if I can walk it. Um, so, uh, and they took me out these girls like I said, for a five mile walk today and I'm home and I am so sore at my knees. So I don't know how these joints are going to hold up because the joints are holding up more weight than they should be holding up. And I keep saying to Nicky, my knees are so sore. You're a doctor, what can I do? And do you know what he says to me? Lose weight. That's not what any woman ever wants to hear. She never wants to hear those words, lose weight. So um, I will try and walk the half marathon. These more fit ones are going to run a half marathon. And we really have asked two ways. People either sponsor the family or people get on board and do something themselves uh, and get sponsorship to try and make sure that these white flags no longer need to fly, that they can be brought in and these people will have food to get them through until the COVID restrictions are lifted in Guatemala. Thank you, Dickie, for um, being part of our meeting tonight. Um, now, this is the part that many ladies love, and we're going to have a recipe tonight. And it's from uh, one of our own, not one, one of the ladies tonight, but one of the men, our one and only Colin MacArthur. And he's going to tell us how to make do a recipe which I think we will all enjoy. Thank you, Colin. This is great because you've got the video on the stuff and not me. What we're going to make tonight is a beautiful halloumi sandwich on a bagel, lovely bagels, just out of the shop, New York bagels. Halloumi. What is halloumi? Halloumi is some sort of cheese but it's really tasty and the beauty about it is it's lovely and hard and you can fry it so let's get started if we can open the bagels your bagels so what we're going to do is slice this in half it's like cutting your fingers off they're a wee bit tough but Really tasty. So, a nice dollop of olive oil. Just let that heat. We're going to toast them. Get those nice. And then on that, once that's toasted, we're going to put this halloumi on it, which is very wet. Pause a second, kind of. Just going to slice this in nice slices. Just, and we're going to fry this. All we're doing is getting a wee bit of heat in the bagel, getting them toasted a wee bit. Um, okay, so that's it. That's our bagel, toasted. A wee bit more olive oil in. Just uh, fry the homey. So on top of that there, crack a wee bit of black pepper and some salt. 
So it's all about just getting nice flavours. So on the bagel, we're going to put some cream cheese. Cream cheese on one side. Just like that there. And then on the other side we're going to put some pesto. This pesto we just made the other day ourselves, or my son made it. And uh, it's with some spinach that we had grown in the greenhouse. Um, spinach, walnuts, and olive oil and parmesan. So just put that on there like that. But you can see that who with me. It's you go in the sh you go in the shops and you you see it on the menu in some fancy uh, coffee shops and you wonder what what on the earth is the limit. But you actually use it usually like this here. You fry it off and it's only ten minutes for high and it becomes really tasty and you're bringing the flavour and it actually loosens up. It's like rubber when you when it's out of a fridge. But when you get a bit of heat in it, it's really good. And you can see you can see the colour starting to come on there now. Let's just stack this up. Just stack that there. Right. This is a monster sandwich now. I'll just knock that off. Get that out of the way. So for these here, some dried tomatoes. Just, you can be poised and use a fork if you want, or just like me, just get your fingers in there. And that's a that's a wee one. I'm gonna stick another good sized one on. Because you want loads of flavour. That there, put that bad boy on there. And that's your halloumi and sun-dried tomato bagel. That is beautiful. The flavour in that there will just uh, light up your light up your life for a moment anyway. Mmm, that is good. <laughs> so I hope you enjoy that. Try that at home. Okay, thank you very much Colin for that recipe and ladies I hope you enjoy making that at home yourselves. Now I have asked Phyllis Cochran, she has spoken to us on a number of occasions in our Walk for Life and I've asked her again tonight if she would share with us how to stay in shape both physically and spiritually during a time of lockdown. So over to you Phyllis in your home in Ballywatt. Thank you very much. Hello ladies, I hope everybody is staying safe and keeping well in this lockdown season. I've just got a few pointers here um, while we're at home just to stay in shape uh, spiritually, mentally and physically through this season of lockdown. So S, start each day with Bible and prayer. Focus on God. I know that if I started the day and left my bedroom um, without praying and reading before I leave the bedroom, well then it just gets left to the side and um, something else um, comes under my mind and uh, I do everything else and I think that's the devil that tries to, to stop me from doing it. So just focus on that time to be alone with God and have our perspective restored, our minds renewed and try to find a place that suits you, whether it's your kitchen table, outside on a beautiful day or just in your bedroom like me. H, stay healthy, form healthy patterns. And I know every one of us at this time, you know, it could be very easy to go to the fridge. We are all baking and all cooking more, but I would say don't form those unhealthy patterns in terms of what we eat as well as an activity. Sitting in front of a screen all day or snacking while we're watching something and as quickly 
uh, we become very lazy. So be careful about what you're eating and of course take some exercise. Um, go for a lovely walk or else just out to your garden, just gentle walk about and enjoy that fresh air when we can. We are so blessed where we live and we can really enjoy it. And of course it is very good for the mind as well whenever you get exercise. Appreciate. A is for appreciate. Take time to be thankful. We should give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for us. You know, at the minute we are really appreciating our NHS and our, our um, doctors and nurses and our care workers. And you could put so many onto the list. Those that are keeping the whole country going at the minute are farmers, our delivery men, our postmen, our pharmacists, our shopkeepers, our postal uh, workers, and, and just so many people that we just want to be thankful to. And we want to say thanks you know, for everybody that is working so hard at the minute. And you know, sometimes when, when we give thanks, it means that we're not grumbling and not complaining. It gives us an attitude of thankfulness and, and being happy. So take a time in your day just to think of somebody that you could give thanks for and all that they're doing. Take time at your meal times at home with your family just to say a short prayer of thanks and be grateful for no matter how big or small the thing is, just say thank you. P is for people. Make contact with family and friends. And we hope soon that we'll be able to meet with more family members and our friends. But until that time, we are to be thankful, you know, that we can really still connect. It could be easy maybe just to sit in the house and say, oh, I don't want to be bothered and, and become disconnected and, and uh, lose confidence about meeting with others and become isolated. But that would be detrimental to our well-being. So let's embrace our social media it's wonderful i've never listened to so many good sermons and uh, all our apps and facetime or just ladies lift the phone speak to somebody who's lonely somebody who's isolated somebody that you know that could cherish a phone call or just to hear your voice so please stay connected to people and then e your eyes and your ears guard what you read and what you listen to and sometimes there's overload at the minute with bad news and listening to death threats. Sometimes it's good to turn that off. Sometimes it's good to turn off the TV screen and do something else because maybe the thing that you're watching is maybe not good for the eyes or the ears. So be very careful in these days that you're not spending too much time in front of television. And we're told to always do things that are noble, pure, excellent and praiseworthy. So spend time instead maybe doing something more constructive, connecting with people, very meaningfully of course, and then connecting with God. So stay in shape, spiritually, mentally and physically. God Thank you Phyllis for sharing with us tonight and ladies I do hope you take what she had to say and that we will stay in shape both physically and spiritually. Ladies, thank you for joining us tonight and I hope that you will join us again next Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Just before I go, I want to close in a word of prayer. Uh, so let us all pray at this time. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for being with us throughout another week. We thank you, Lord, for all your goodness to us. Thank you for your love and thank you for your salvation. And now, Lord, I just ask that you would bless us all in this another week and that you would keep us all safe. Oh God, we pray until we meet again in your name. Amen.